This is the tale of the pizza place and the police. And um, when I was about oh, 15, 20 years ago, I was living here in Lincoln and I was in need of a new job and a pizza place was hiring a manager. And I had management experience and I went into my interview and it appeared as though um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get it. And he contacted me a couple of days later though. And it's like, yeah, you're our general manager. Come in, he bought the place from a place that used to be a pizza restaurant right before that. So he kept all the equipment and everything. And so all we had to do is like clean it up. But the place was rated so badly. There, there was a reason that it closed down and we had to clean all this horrible shit up. But um, it, it finally got going. And I noticed a trend in the employees that he hired and most of them were very, very, very not bright individuals. And um, I'm not gonna say where it was or any call anybody out by name, but um, I, I got to where I did some hiring and there was also like a computer in the background and I'm pretty sure that I got hired as the manager because I was the youngest applicant that there was on the list. And so he was assuming that I wouldn't be keeping track of as much shit or whatever. And there was a computer back in the office that he swore didn't work, but it worked. It just didn't have a mouse. And he didn't know how a computer was to function without a mouse because he wasn't very bright himself. And so I got the computer up and running. They had all of their old stuff on there. So I just switched out the names on things and I was able to start tracking food costs and all of that stuff. And what it turned out to be was that the guy had opened up the restaurant to begin with as a check kiting scam and was just trying to launder the money through the place and didn't intend for it to succeed. He was hiring people on purpose to make it end up being closed down so that he could get some insurance money from it as well. But we started actually making the place run and it was getting very disturbing for him. He'd come in and try to take just money out of the drawer to go do things and we're like, oh, gotta write down how much that was and that he came in and got it and he was like, but why are you doing? And I was like, so that we make sure that the drawers come out right in the end so that we know if anybody's stealing or not. And so with the ridiculous amount of employees that he had hired that were just not so bright, we of course had a number of mishaps that happened. And in the neighborhood we were in also, it was it was a pretty bad neighborhood as far as Lincoln goes. Like there was one time where we would prop open the door because all of us were smokers and we'd all go sit out if there was nothing going on at the middle of the afternoon. Have a, have, have a quick store meeting of just sitting around and having a smoke outside. And like, we watched a guy get busted for drugs at the Dollar General across the parking lot from us and stuff. And there was anthrax put in the mailbox, also in the parking lot with us. But um, so we saw the police around on a semi-regular basis. And the one time I get a call and it was like, not my shift, I wasn't supposed to go in that day, but I had to get somebody to pick me up because the police are here okay, well, why is that a big deal? The police have been there for a number of times. No, they're in here. They're, they're fingerprinting right now. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> and when I got there, it turns out we had one kid who was still in high school, and we're going to call him Joe. And Joe was one of those scrawny, super tall kids who wanted to be super gangster, and he wore his pants, like, basically around his ankles, pretty much as far as doing the baggy pants thing goes, because belts hurt apparently to wear but we all knew that he was a big stoner but he was apparently also dealing and we didn't know that and uh he went out on his break one time and met with his dealer who assaulted him to get all of the money that he had and then take off and he came back inside and called the police to report the assault and admitted that it was his drug dealer that had attacked him. And then the police immediately caught the drug dealer. He hadn't really gone that far, but they were holding on to like a couple of pounds of weed as well as quite a bit of amphetamines as well, or methamphetamines. And so they just immediately blamed it on Joe and said, oh yeah, when we, you know, if we also stole his drugs, so these were all his drugs. And somehow that turned into the police showing up, fingerprinting our entire store uh, Joe getting taken in. And so our apron was, one of our aprons was actually in an evidence bag because he'd been wearing it when he went outside to get assaulted. And um, then, yeah, so 
So that happened and he got to the police station and they had patted him down and stuff. And when they were done, they were like, okay, son, let's get you in here so we can start talking about what happened. He's like, oh, you missed my pipe. And like pulls it out and hands it to him. And Joe just wasn't very smart. And he had another couple of things that happened around there. But that that was his big time with the police and trying to clean up. After, if you've ever had your place dusted for prints, which only the pizza place, as far as I know, is it that stuff gets everywhere. And so cleaning, we had to like basically call in all of our staff to clean up for it, close down the store for a little while so we could get everything clean. But um, we had another genius who worked for us that he was an older gentleman and he still lived with his mom. And I don't, I don't believe he was like on the spectrum or anything like that. He just was not a very smart dude. It wasn't like a social type of communications thing. He just, he just didn't, he just wasn't the brightest bulb in the bunch. And he was constantly dating strippers who would constantly have him like pay for their phone bills and then not hang out with them for another month. And he did things like there was one time when we had to have a, uh, there was a pizza, the delivery that went out and they call us up and they're like, yeah, so uh, Kevin, for example, uh, delivered her pizza and there was a band aid in it. And we're like, okay. So he gets back and we're like, there was a band aid in the pizza. He's like, oh yeah, I wondered where that went. It was like, okay, you are no longer touching the pizza stuff. Got it. You're not around there. Because there were also times where it was like, go, go wash your hands. You've been out on delivery. I already did once today. Okay, you aren't around any food prep areas at all. And so got him down to where, right before the Band-Aid incident, though, was one of the hardest explanations I've tried to deliver in my life. And it was just showing him how a pizza was cut. And this Kevin, um, as they call him on Reddit, sat down and... The story is posted on stories about Kevin on Reddit, so really obscure chance that you might have heard it. But needed the pizzas cut into you know like six, and then they get bigger. Was as they get bigger, you cut them more slices. But we had diagrams of each thing, and he was like, "Okay, so how do I cut this one?" And I'm like, "You cut it down the middle. Like, how do you know where the middle is?" And I was like, "Well, it's it's the center, the the middle of the pizza. You, the each." But the center, I don't know how to find it. <laughs> and I, I had no, this man was in his 50s. And I have no idea how to explain it. I was like, you cut it in half. Yeah, but how to, and we're showing in pictures and it's just like, okay, just just go over there. Just, just drive. That's all you need to do from now on. All you have to do is be a driver. And I still, we had him out on delivery one night. And I get this phone call and it's him. And he's like, yeah, I was just in a car accident. And I'm like five, five blocks, 10 blocks, something like that away from the delivery. So if you want to call him and let him know, and he's been out for like 45 minutes. So the pizza's cold, you know, and it was in a car accident. So probably jolted around a little bit in the box. He's like, if you want to just let him know, I'm going to walk over and deliver the pizza. And then I'm going to go to the hospital because that's going to get me a really big tip. I think if they see me showing up all bloody with their pizza, because that's how determined I was. And I'm like, no, dude, you, you, you just go to the hospital. That's that's what you do. You don't, you don't show up bloody with the pizza. We'll we'll call them and let them know. No, no, I really want it. It's like you can hear the police in the background trying to convince him to like just hop in the ambulance and go. And we finally like got him to go. But um, yeah, that's that's my fun story of working at with terribly incompetent people and having the police show up and. Uh, have an evidence, have fingerprint everything, and have an apron and evidence. <laughs>